So you have some things ready to go. Are you packed for the rest of the trip? Not yet. I'm so jealous, frankly, <laughs> that she gets to go and be in those places because it's got to bring the stories to life in, in a new, special way. The thing I'm looking forward to most is um, being able to see where Jesus walked, growing in my faith, and getting to try new things. So I know this is something that she's just going to keep and treasure in her heart always. We just arrived in Israel. What's unique about Under the Fig Tree Ministries is that we help people to see the Bible in context in the lands of the Bible. The Heart of God trip is targeted for people with special needs, moderate to high functioning. It comes from the idea of if you want to bless me, bless my kids. If you want to bless God, bless his kids. And I think some of the most special of God's children are those with special needs. His name was Herod, and you know him as Herod the Great. Herod the Great. Herod the Great built a harbor here where you couldn't build a harbor. And we'll talk about Herod again later on. Their eyes are full of questions, their hearts are full of wonder, and um, it is just so rich to, to see these ones who society often passes by uh, to be at the center of God's attention, at the center of this trip. Really, the group had no idea how we were going to start our day. And uh, we just drove a little bit north here uh, at Engeb, and we all got on a boat. And we took a boat ride across the Sea of Galilee. Partway through, we stopped, and uh, the guys who ran the boat came and offered to us the opportunity to do some fishing, uh, ancient style. And he looks out on the sea, and his disciples are rowing against what? The wind. The wind. What's the word for wind in Hebrew? Ruach. And what does ruach mean? Spirit. Spirit. I've been here twice, and I've never, we were blessed with rain yesterday, and this is, I've never seen it so green, ever. This is amazing. I pray that God will use and the Holy Spirit will anoint this experience in your lives that when we go home that he will anoint it in such a way that people will see Jesus in you singular and in us plural in a stronger and stronger way. Yeah we were sitting by the Sea of Galilee and listened to George speak for a while and that was very moving. I felt like one of the disciples sitting there it just felt really cool. So we are at a place called Kafar Kadim, and it's kind of a place that brings you back to the first century and to the ancient time. So we're learning how to how they milked goats and how they farmed their wheat and made bread, and then we're gonna get to ride some donkeys. It's gonna be really fun. <laughs> Guys, I'm not walking to you because the stones eat and crush them. They need to eat. Okay. 
it's a joke. It's okay, so All right, Michaela. Yeah, good job. Good work, right? Squeeze her. Squeeze. 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 Yeah. 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 Oh, she's going lefty. Lefty. Yeah, so you just pour some, put some dough, and it gets hard. You put it on the on the on the fire grill, and it gets hard, and then and then it becomes a regular piece of bread. When I first stepped onto the donkey, it was a little nerve-wracking, and then when I started riding it, it was kind of wobbling. But luckily, I didn't fall over. And it was just kind of like riding a horse. Did you get a donkey license? I did. It is an international donkey license, by the way. It an is. An international donkey rider's license. So. Yep, so I got it both times, actually. You know what, though? It, my, my heart's a little bit hurt because you liked all of those things, but you didn't like the fish that we made on oh, the Sea of yeah. Galilee. Yeah. Come on, Oh, Richard. yeah, okay. And all right, fish show was, me a bone. Come on. And the fish was, and the fish was excellent also. The fish that <laughs> Jesus made on the Sea of Galilee that he caught and put it over the fire. Yeah, yeah. See, I, see it, it you don't it. mean that, do you? You don't mean that. You like the donkey better, right? <laughs> I kind of came first thinking this trip was maybe more, you know, for me, but it's been this switch of, of making sure that the person that I'm with is having all that they need and, and learning the same things that I'm absorbing. And, and I see that, that, that switch and that transformation happening too, and that's, that's a beautiful thing. I love the buddy system for this trip. Uh, and even beyond the buddy system of having that one kind of accountable person for every participant, uh, we have really come, uh, become a community and I see people stepping in with other participants and when somebody needs a hand, uh, when somebody is kind of getting emotional, when, you know, when somebody's having any sort of problem, people are stepping in. The buddy is there fully for that participant to 100% support them in any capacity, whether it's emotionally, physically, or mentally. We are here to make sure that these participants uh, have the best experience, that they meet Jesus, that they meet God, that they grow spiritually. But we're also gonna, we're gonna push them a little bit. We're not gonna do anything that they can't do. We're not gonna do anything that puts them in their danger zone, but we give them a safe place to risk. Well, the way God designed the Dead Sea, we are 1,300 feet below sea level. We are the lowest point on Earth. We um, took a bus all over to come to here to this hotel, and then we got on the waves and went to the Dead Sea and swam in it. It was a blast. So you just kick your feet up and you lay on your back like that. Yeah, it was so salty and we got a float. So that's really cool. And then when you went, you put your hand down on the bottom of the um, of the sea and you what did you pull up? I pulled some sea, um, some salt in my hand. Yeah, big chunks of salt. Yes, it was really cool. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Say these words after me. Shema Israel. Shema Israel. Adonai Eloheinu. Adonai Eloheinu. Adonai Echad. Adonai Echad. Ve'ahavta et Adonai Eloecha. Ve'ahavta et Adonai Eloecha. Ve'ahavta et Adonai Eloecha. Ve'ahavta et Adonai Eloecha. Ve'ahavta et Adonai Eloecha.
Ubechol Nafshecha. Ubechol Meodecha. Be'ahavta Re'acha Kamocha. Amen. The very words of God in English together. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God. The Lord alone. I am really pleased with this group. A couple of them have some walking issues, and uh, we're pacing the trip according to their pace. So they're doing their very best, and we're moving along very well. First stop is a place called Masada. Say Masada. 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 We are on the top of this um, fortress built by Herod the Great in the Judah wilderness. I think right now we're standing in one of his private chambers. Okay, now over here. I so appreciate George's sensitivity uh, to the pace that we need. And uh, certainly, you know, there's rocky terrain and there's a little slipping on rocks here and there, but everyone's doing so well. And we go at a pace that just obviously uh, keeps our participants safe, but also engaged, you know, so they're not overly worn out. From this, and you have life. Every morning, there's an excitement on the bus. Uh, it's <laughs> we have to find ways to get everyone's attention on the bus. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. A bunchy bunchy. A bunchy bunchy. Today, today is the day. It's a great day. It's the sun shining out. It's a beautiful day in Israel. And we rode camels today and I had a blast. There were other camels that were right behind us. We had had three on one. We had sometimes people, other people had one on theirs. They led us into the wilderness, into like rocks, and then we rode the camels. There was a lot of like ups and downs. Our camel liked to eat a lot, so we stopped and ate. But yeah, it was fun. We got to like go past each other, which was fun. Did we wave at anyone? Jake. Hey. Jake, Amber, yeah, we waved Vinny. Jake. Oh yeah, Vinny. <laughs> yeah, that was good. We waved at them. Oh, Shanda, was that you? Oh my goodness. Oh. The tea was excellent, and the coffee was excellent, and it was a fun, just fun time at this Bedouin tent. The cup that overflows, and it's one where, got, where you keep pouring and keep pouring, and when you want to stop having tea, you leave some in the bottom, and that tells them that's enough. <laughs> That's enough. So it's all relationship. In fact, you could argue that... Solid yeah, so we, this was a really neat experience too because we've been to so many different types of um, like land while we were here. So we were started out in the city in Tel Aviv and then we were up north in the Galilee where things were really green with a ton of flowers down by the Sea of Galilee. And now we're out here in the wilderness and it's a very different environment. Um, it's much more dry. Um, there's barely any green out here. It's a lot, um, it's hotter. Um, it's really good for our participants to get this idea that the land is really different depending on where you are. I sense God's smile. I just feel his presence on this trip and the whole purpose of the Heart of God trip, again, is simply to make God smile and he is smiling. Joshua, Jericho, 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 Joshua, Jericho, Jericho, and the walls came tumbling down. The man of Gideon, you can talk about the man of Saul, but there's none like good old Joshua and the battle of Jericho. Right now we're in the city of Jerusalem and we're just walking where we think that Jesus walked. And so everywhere we go, we're going on foot and just learning different biblical stories and putting the context together with where we're walking. And I like that it's still, it 
it's not a museum or a, an archaeological, I mean it is, but it's still a city. We saw kids playing today, we saw families. We saw people buying stuff, buying food. We saw a wedding yep. going on, yeah. pretty cool. I love it here. But I think this is actually one of my favorite spots. Her God trip means to me, it's for a chance for people with special needs to be able to experience, or to be able to walk where Jesus walked. And it's kind of leading the way for maybe some people that haven't had the chance to do it yet, that if they would like to do it, they can do it. They are young. They're just bubbling with enthusiasm. And it's catchy. So, uh, hats off to George and Beth and uh, Under the Fig Tree and Heart of Tour, Heart of God Tour. They are wonderful and everyone should, if they can, take advantage of it and do it. That's the beautiful gate. Kidron Valley. Pools of Bethesda are up, up north on the north end. We met with a representative of the Ministry of Tourism and she gave all of our participants um, a little certificate that says we are now Goodwill Ambassadors for Israel. And everyone got a little pin and we had kind of a ceremony. Uh, I think our participants really loved it. We are especially moved when special needs people are coming here and uh, we would like to see it happen a lot and it was really um, uh, heartwarming to give them the certificates and meeting them. I heard of God is a trip to the Holy Land for people with special needs and their experience with Israel. And what I learned about this trip so far is meeting new people and riding donkeys. I have to say one of my favorite moments was doing our talent show tonight. That was very, um, I felt the Holy Spirit really moving through me and it caused me to shake, but it was a really cool feeling. It was a good shake. trip is focused on those with special needs. They are the center of the trip and that's a number one priority for me uh, and, it, and it is absolutely the priority for all of the staff that comes on, on this trip. So uh, when I think about the Heart of God trip and, um, and what people have said to us in response to this trip, they're just overwhelmed by the opportunity, they're overwhelmed by the experience, and they're overwhelmed in giving God glory for um, the young ones. They're, their loved ones when they come home. There you go. And of course, I don't want to go home. I actually want to stay here for a while, yeah. But parents are always praying for us. Family members, church members are always praying for us. Just praying for us for a safe time here and a safe trip here and a safe flight home. It's it's very bittersweet the fact that it's our last day. But this group has been a really fun group. I've really I've made some nice friends and. So I'm, I'm sad to leave because I've enjoyed it, but I'm also ready to get back home. And Father, we pray for traveling mercies now as, as we go. Give to us a good night's rest. When we put head to pillow, Lord, it may not be a lot of sleep, but may it be a good sleep.
Well, hey, um, welcome to you all for our Under the Fig Tree Heart of God celebration worship service. We call our hearts and our minds to worship. The trip was a lot of information to take, but more important was transformation. It really it changed our life. And everywhere we went, it was wonderful. And um, Nathaniel is my son, and uh, we, were, we had a wonderful time together. And we will go back anytime. When I went, it was really life-changing, and I um, wanted to actually go back day one. The first day I was home, because I just, I'm more in love with God and George, God is using you to be such a huge blessing to so many people more than you know. So tell me what has happened in your life since you've been to Israel with me. And oh, tough question. Um, I think that trip turned my faith around a lot. Ever since then, um, I had a faith and a deeper like, understanding of how Christ works with us. And you're going to be moving, or are you moving into the uh, at Western Seminary? Yeah, Bunch of House in the fall. Okay, and are you going to start attending the classes there? Yeah. At the seminary? Mm -hmm. Well, good for you. Yeah. Well, bless God. And thank you for sharing with us, Megan. I, I it just, yeah, it blesses me. Thank you. Thank you. You know, we cannot do these trips and offer the kind of scholarships that we do on, unless the generosity of others. And, and we certainly have experienced the generosity of others. And we work really hard, regardless of whether the donation is a dollar or ten dollars or a thousand dollars or whatever it may be. And really, it doesn't really matter out of whose hand it comes. Um, we treat every penny as if it's a, a trust from God himself. So the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord will lift up his countenance to you and give you his peace both now and forevermore. And all of God's people said,